Thank, Thank you. you. I do want to acknowledge our IT person, Dr. Kyla Holmes. She is so helpful with those of us in my generation to keep things going. So thank you, Dr. Holmes. <laughs> and as I was saying, Dr. Williams defied all odds as a black male born in the segregated South. He was born on February the 20th, 1930. Today would have been his 91st birthday. He was born in Bisco, Arkansas, but grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. At the age of five, his father, who was a millwright, died, leaving a widow and two children. His mother was a domestic employee and worked in the homes of Black families until the day that she died, which sadly was on his birthday on February the 20th, 1978, and Dr. Bob was in a classroom at Washington University when he received word about his mother's death. Dr. Bob graduated from Dunbar High School at the age of 16 and in the 10th grade was given an IQ test. And I know many of you know this story, but it's one that needs to be repeated. When he found out that he scored 82, he was relieved thinking that that was passing only to learn from the counselor he was just a few points from being classified as um, mentally retarded. That was close to the mental retardation uh, classification. Consequently, he was advised to prepare for a vocational school. And he took such courses as auto mechanics, bricklaying, electricity, and managed to take English, math, and science. He later enrolled at Dunbar Junior College and at the age of 18, married his high school sweetheart, Dr. Ava Kemp. He and Mrs. Williams started a family and they were married almost 70 years. They were the parents of eight children, 19 grandchildren, 19 great-grandchildren. And I just found out last night from his daughter, Yvonne, that they have two great-great-grandchildren. And many of the family members are with us today. And because he was a family man, he did the responsible thing and started working. His first job was at a car hop doing um, menial labor as an unskilled worker. And while assisting one of his coworkers with calculus, he was encouraged to return to college, which he did. He enrolled at Philander Smith College, worked six days a week from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m., attended Philander from 7 a.m until 10 a.m., five days a week. He graduated in 1953 with honors from Philander, ranked fifth in his class. His major was sociology and his minor was psychology. Because of racial segregation, he was not able to enroll in a graduate program in the South and he and Mrs. Williams and their children relocated and moved to Detroit where he completed a master's degree in educational psychology from Wayne State University. And later, of course, he was the first African-American to receive a PhD in psychology from, the universe, from Washington University in St. Louis. After completing the master's at Wayne State, Dr. and Mrs. Williams returned to Arkansas where he became the first African-American licensed psychologist in the state of Arkansas. We were able to research this um, during his lifetime. Arkansas was one of the first states to have a licensure requirement for psychologists. And Governor Faubus signed Act 129 into law. And within a few months after that act was signed by Governor Faubus, Dr. Williams took the test, passed the test. He was the first African-American staff psychologist at the Arkansas State Hospital. And this, of course, was during the um, peak of the Jim Crow era when Dr. Williams was hired at a state hospital. He shared a certain camaraderie with the staff psychologist, the white staff psychologist, was able to eat in the dining room. And he shared with me in an interview that um, with the desegregation of Arkansas schools approaching, 
he was told that he could no longer eat in the dining room with the white psychologist and that they would have to uh, have a separate segregated dining room for him. Dr. Bob refused to eat in a segregated dining room. Instead, he had lunch at his desk. Later, he and Mrs. Williams moved to St. Louis, where he enrolled in the graduate program at Washington University. He actually applied to five uh, graduate schools, uh, Michigan State University, the University of Illinois at Urbana, the University of Colorado at Boulder, Purdue, and WashU. And he was accepted at four of those five schools. He started the PhD program in September 1957, and this is another historical date in the history of our country because this was the month that the Little Rock Nine desegregated Central High. Following the completion of his uh, PhD, and he was the first again African American to complete the PhD at Washington University. Dr. Williams was assistant chief psychologist at the VA hospital in St. Louis. Uh, he took a position in Spokane, Washington as director of state hospital improvement. He worked for NIMH in San Francisco. He was a consultant for NIMH in Alaska, returned to St. San Francisco, took a position as the first African-American chief psychologist at Jefferson Barracks Hospital, Veterans Hospital there in St. Louis. And then in 1970, he was hired at the full professor level in the psychology department uh, at Washington University and was director of African-American um, studies there. And of note, when he was hired, he was hired at the full professor level. While he was in um, Anchorage, Alaska, sadly, the country suffered the uh, death, the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. And with the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Dr. Williams said that he went through a personal transformation from Negro to a black man. He compared this transformation to the religious experience of Paul on the road to Damascus. At 38, he had a PhD, a highly esteemed position with NIMH. He had a loving wife, eight children. He was a property owner, holder of three advanced degrees and was usually the first to integrate a community. He described this phase of his life as buying into the Euro-American standards and norms. He also began writing poetry and he shared with me in a conversation a few years ago that just recently one of his daughters had located a collection of his poems that gave deep expression to what he was going through at this time. And it's my understanding that that collection will eventually be published. As a result of this transformation, Dr. Williams became one of the founding members of the Association of Black Psychologists, director of the African-American Studies Program at Washington University, coined the term Ebonics in 1973 as part of his studies on the cognitive and language development of Black children, studied and researched Black personality through the lens of African philosophy rather than a European lens and challenged the misuse of IQ testing with black children of which he had been a victim. He was a pioneer in the area of diversity before the American Psychological Association established a division of multicultural psychology. He also researched biases in testing, made several media appearances on national television, published his works in the New York Times, the Washington Post, the LA Examiner, the Chicago Tribune, Newsweek, and other publications. And he, of course, is the author of several books and articles. As a critic of racial and cultural biases in IQ testing, Dr. Williams developed the BITCH test. And it took me a while to say BITCH test, <laughs> which stands for Black Intelligence Test of Cultural Homogeneity, showing that um, 
one's environment influences their cognitive development and performance on IQ testing. There was a lawsuit in um, California barring the use of IQ testing for children of color as a pipeline to um, special education programs. This was in Oakland and the misuse of IQ testing. And Dr. Bob was at the forefront of that. However, perhaps one of his most accomplished, um, one of his greatest accomplishments is his marriage to Dr. Uh, to Mrs. Ava Kemp. Dr. and Mrs. Williams were a team and they were host to many psychologists and students in their home. Uh, on a personal note, I was the recipient of being a visitor along with students from the University of Arkansas. One of Dr. Bob's famous quotes is, do not forget to give back to the community that birthed you. And he gave back in so many ways, both he and Mrs. Williams gave back to the community to include Arkansas. Dr. Williams drafted the 10 point program, which challenged universities around the country to open their doors to African-American students. And there are two of us on this Zoom today who are beneficiaries of that 10 point program. Dr. Harriet Richard, whom you will hear from shortly, and I were among the first three African-American um, psychology graduates from the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. I was blessed to be the first PhD clinical psychologist. Dr. Robbie Bush was the first African-American um, clinical psychologist, the first African-American male clinical psychologist. And Dr. Harriet Richard was the first PhD in applied experimental from the University of Arkansas, thanks to the pioneering efforts of Dr. Robert Williams. The last two books that he published were Racism Learned at an Early Age Through Racial Scripting and Raising Black Kids to Be Okay. And our association, um, can provide copies of those who are interested. And Dr. Holmes will post in the chat my email address if you're interested in obtaining copies of these two books. These were his last two books. During the last decade of Dr. Williams' life, he gave back to Arkansas. In March 20, uh, on March 25th of 2011, he was invited by the psychology department as a distinguished lecturer. We had not had contact with Dr. Williams in a number of years. When I made the call, he did not turn me down, gladly accepted the invitation. And on March the 25th, to a standing crowd only, Dr. Williams delivered a powerful message, a powerful presentation on a native son returns. This was March the 25th, 2011. That was a, an eventful day. Little Rock Nine, Minnie uh, Jean Brown Tricky was there and here she is photographed with Dr. and Mrs. Williams at Philandon at the Nugent Center. Also on that date, March the 25th, 2011, the Psychology Club at Philanda Smith was renamed the Robert L. Williams Psychology Club. To the right is now Dr. Alexis Davis, who was a student at the time presenting the citation to Dr. Williams. And on the left, you see a group of psychologists, all smiles, who were thrilled to be in the presence of Dr. and Mrs. Williams. We hosted them to dinner at one of our then famous black owned restaurants, 1620. On October the 15th, 2011, Dr. Williams was inducted into to the Arkansas Hall of Fame and he was accompanied by Mrs. Williams, most of his children and grandchildren. It was a memorable occasion. May 3rd, 2014, after the release of his book, Raising Black Children to Be Okay, Dr. Williams was invited 
or a conference for the community. He was the keynote speaker. And here are relatives from Arkansas, his nieces in the top frame, and at the bottom members of AABPP at Second Baptist Church, who opened their doors for us to host this event for the African-American community. September 2014, Dr. Bob was honored by Washington University. Um, several of us on this Zoom were in attendance and I was given the honor and privilege to make presentations from Arkansas. Also in attendance was Dr. Joseph White, father of black psychologist. And as a side note, Dr. Uh, Williams has shared with us that Dr. Joseph White was the first black psychologist that he met. And then Dr. Joseph White shared with us that Dr. Robert Williams was the first black psychologist that he met. These trailblazers, both in attendance at this commemoration. February 27, 2015, Dr. Williams was invited as a distinguished laureate lecturer by the Arkansas Black Hall of Fame. Uh, the picture to your left is Dr. Williams giving a lecture to a group of young people. And they were so attentive to the African proverbs, the words of wisdom that he shared with them. There were uh, groups that came from as far away as South Arkansas and Camden to hear Dr. Williams speak. To your right, um, is a presentation being made by the executive director of the Arkansas Hall of Fame, Mr. Charles Stewart, to Dr. Williams after his um, lecture. And in the middle frame, we have members of our association uh, with Dr. Bob. This was uh, on a cold February night, but the public turned out and the lecture hall was packed. Dr. Bob returned to Arkansas November the 7th, 2015. And this was the first joint appearance of Dr. Robert L. Williams and Dr. Terrence Roberts. Dr. Terrence Roberts is one of the Little Rock Nine who is a psychologist. Ironically, it never met. And our organization along with the Central Arkansas chapter of the Black Social Workers hosted a conference on the effect of racism and invited Dr. Williams and Dr. Roberts, and they were there. And as a, an aside, a Dr. Patricia Newton noted black psychiatrist from Arkansas was one of the presenters. And sadly, she transitioned a few months after Dr. Dr. Williams. On April the 15th, 2016, Dr. Williams made his last visit to Arkansas as a guest lecturer for the fourth biennial Arkansas Minority Health Summit. And this was hosted at Philander Smith as well. And in this photograph, we have Dr. Williams, um, Dr. Kevin Washington, who was president of the uh, Association of Black Psychologists and members of AABPP. Last year, the Arkansas Association of Black Psychologists held a centennial commemoration recognizing the historical contributions of African-American psychologists from Arkansas. And of course, Dr. Williams was one of our honorees. To my knowledge, this perhaps was the last time that Dr. Williams made a public statement on February the 28th, 2020. He was unable to be with us in person. However, we were able to invite him through a telephone call to give and leave with us words of wisdom. And at this time, I have the audio tape of the words that Dr. Williams shared with us almost a year ago. So let's listen to his words of wisdom. You know, I wish I could be there with all of you, but uh, my health is not permitted, so I'm so happy that I'm able to say a few words over the microphone. And one of the things I want all of you to know that, uh, that I, 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 I'm struggling, because Mark, as uh, Frederick Douglass said, there's no struggle, there's no progress. So I'm making some progress by health. And one of the things 
Thank you, Dr. Bob, from the Arkansas Association of Black Psychology Professionals. We are who we are because of you, and we honor you with reverence at this time. Thank you again for being with us to share some of the highlights of Dr. Williams' life. And at this time, we have guests who will make expressions. Dr. Um, Ms. Frida, Alfreda Brown, one of Dr. Williams' former staff members and graduate of Washington University, will give um, some comments, followed by Dr. Harriet Richard, um, who again was one of the graduates, um, first African-American graduates uh, in the psychology department from the University of Arkansas, followed by Dr. Horace, uh, Horace Mitchell. And we're just so honored that he's able to be with us to share just some brief comments. And the last expressions we will hear will be from his family, starting with e Ms. Yvonne Williams, who will introduce the family, and then final expressions will be given from his daughter, Ms. Pooh. And as they are preparing to make expressions, I also want to share with our listening audience that one of the projects that we undertook last, um, was started in 2018, was to archive oral interviews of African-American psychologists from Arkansas. The Butler Center, with the Central Arkansas Library System has been working with us. And those oral interviews will be released on February the 23rd, 2021 during Black History Month 2021. And we will post the link to access those oral interviews. Dr. Williams was the first. His interview was recorded on November 2018. And this is, again, through a collaborative effort with the Butler Center of Arkansas Studies that we've been able to bring this um, history to not only Arkansas, but to America. And at this time, we will hear from Ms. Brown. Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Dr. Griffin, and also, I'd like to express my appreciation um, to your organization, uh, the Arkansas Association of Black uh, Psychology Professionals uh, for putting on this um, presentation and legacy uh, of honoring uh, Dr. Williams. And I also like to uh, say hello to his family members, my uh, adopted uh, family uh, of, Dr. Williams' children, who are also on this video today. Um, this is indeed an honor for me um, to be a part of this presentation. And I don't think I can ever hear enough about Dr. Williams and his humble beginnings here in Arkansas. I uh, was fortunate enough to meet Dr. Williams in 1971 when he was a presenter and at Philander Smith College and I was a student there. And fortunately enough, I, and I don't know how I was able to interact with him after his presentation, but he told me about Washington University in St. Louis and encouraged me to apply uh, for graduate work there. And I did. Um, once I got to St. Louis, 
uh, because I was a first um, college graduate and Lord knows no one in my family even thought about going on to graduate school. So uh, this was all new to me. And if it had not been for Dr. Williams and his wife, Ava, and his eight children, I don't know how I would have survived uh, moving from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas to St. Louis, Missouri to attend graduate school. I thought I was special, but as I hear people over the years talk about their interaction with Ava and his H and Dr. Williams and their eight children, I just now have come to the realization that's just what they did. It was just them. They invited you in to their homes and you quickly felt a part of them. And that's what they did for me and many of the other uh, black students who attended school there at Washington University. Needless to say, we needed a lot of nurturing, a lot of uh, mentoring, and uh, we needed an advocate. And that is what Dr. Williams was for all of us who were fortunate enough to attend the university uh, back in the early 70s. One of the things that I uh, heard in your presentation, Dr. Griffin, was uh, the information about when Dr. Williams was offered a position at Washington University. I didn't realize that he had only been there uh, one year before I attended. He was hired in 1970. And as I recall listening to stories that Dr. Williams used to tell over the years, some things uh, just sort of, uh, you know, are very, very clear to me now as I reflect that. Dr. Williams was always very strategic, very analytical, and always impactful. But most of all, he was fun. He was just fun. And going back to being hired in the 70s at Washington University, I love the story when he used to tell us about how he insisted when he was hired that he got tenure. And the funny thing about it, when he told it back in those days, he used to call it tenure. But regardless of what he called it, he got it. And that made a difference in terms of how he was able to shape and develop the, what we now are called in those days, the Black Studies Department. Because he walked on that campus with no fear. And growing up in the South, one of the things that we all probably experienced was the fear of the repercussion of being Black and stepping out of line. Well, with Dr. Williams, there were no lies. And he strategically negotiated that tenure, which meant that he had a lifelong appointment. And the things that normally happen to people of color probably could not happen to him because he was protected by that tenure. Now, he just didn't use that for himself but he used it to leverage power for all of the students that studied under him. And there were times when you had to defend your thesis or your dissertation, and there were people in the room who wanted to question certain assumptions. And that booming voice of Dr. Williams would come through. And those are the things that I, cherished about him as a man, as a professor, as a tenure uh, professor, as a mentor. And also finally, let me just say, there was never a dull moment around Dr. Williams. He always knew how to bring fun into every conversation. I could go on, <laughs> but I will pause here because I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> sing his praises and I again would like to thank you so very much for allowing me to express my love and appreciation for a man who definitely made a difference in my life. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Brown. We wanted to hear your voice from having walked that personal journey with Dr. Williams. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Now, if Dr. Richard will unmute. I did. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hello, Harriet. Dr. Hey. Richard. Glad How you can join us. I know that this is a full day for you, but thank you for being with us. And now we would like to hear some expressions from you regarding your relationship with Dr. Williams. Okay, well, it's my pleasure. Um, oh yeah, okay. So Dion, so it doesn't show my little picture. It just shows that I can't, I cannot even jump on the screen because I had cataract surgery yesterday and I just had a little COVID shot. I'm masked up. Uh, it's, it's too much. Okay. But we for see this, your beautiful picture. We see your beautiful picture. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I can just hear him talking about this six. I, you know, he probably was like, you know what I did with a six cent stamp? I, I, I changed the world. And yes, indeed, he did. In 1970, when he mailed out those 300 uh, letters uh, when he was president of ABCI uh, to those institutions of higher learning to colleges and universities across this country. Yes, he did change the landscape. Uh, it led to untold numbers of us getting PhDs in psychology. I think the, the number is 86. We know 86 colleges and universities adopted uh, some form of his plan. Uh, and it was through uh, Dr. Griffith's presentation that she gave at uh, ABCI that I found out that I was one of the fortunate ones whose master's and PhD was actually paid for by the University of Arkansas, but it's based on Dr. Williams' letter, his 10-point plan. And that, that, I mean, that stamp went a long way. It really did. And like I said, he would be telling jokes about that for, for years. And we will probably be telling jokes about that and what he did for years. Um, he was a mentor and uh, called me his homegirl because I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. and. Uh, he, he, in fact, brought six or eight of us psychologists, uh, Black psychologists, to Washington University at one point to uh, give a seminar on Black psychology for graduate students. Uh, he was always looking for ways to do more for the next generation, you know, to, to help. Uh, he was always willing to help uh, and be supportive. My undergraduate students even interviewed him um, because I have a distinguished psychologist kind of interview where they, each of them writes a kind of a hypothetical questions they would like to ask uh, based on reading their work. And then I pick the top three and they interview that particular psychologist and Dr. Williams was one of those. And of course, you know, he had stories. Usually it's about 30 minutes. We well, say 15 minutes, but you know, it's gonna be 30 minutes. And he told stories and gave words of encouragement meant to uh, the students. And uh, there were also several professors that were involved in that who were sitting, listening, giving rapt attention. Uh, his wife is, was a soror of mine, Delta Sigma Theta. And uh, the, year, the, the year, I guess, just before his 90th birthday, I spoke uh, with him. And he talked about his love for his children and family meant a lot for him. Um, and it, it means a lot to, to, to many of us. And in fact, when I told my children about him, they knew him, they're like, oh, you mean, you mean the guy, the tall guy with the voice who always was asking how we were and what we were doing? Yes, that one. So he made an indelible imprint on me and my family and anyone and everyone he met. If you were from Arkansas, you were always special. And I, you know, that was, that's just the way we felt. Of course, he probably made everybody feel special. So I thank you for this opportunity to, um, you know, let me say a few words about what he meant to me and to my students and to oh, members of ABCI, an elder to be remembered forever. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Richard, for those personal expressions and sharing so many organic memories of your history with Dr. Williams. And even though he didn't know our children, he knew about our children. 
because he was intentional about nurturing the next generation. Absolutely. My know him by name, although mm -hmm. they never had an opportunity to meet him personally. That was just who he was. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Now we will hear from Dr. Horace Mitchell, former student and um, esteemed um, president. Uh, I don't know if you're retired now or not, Dr. Mitchell, and I won't um, attempt to share with our uh, audience what your position is now. I will uh, allow you to share that if you would, please. So at this time, if you will open um, your audio and video, we would love to hear from you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you uh, so much. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. And I wanna thank Yvonne again for letting me know that uh, this was happening today. Um, and I've enjoyed the whole uh, program and it's been <sighs> enlightening beyond all the things that I already knew about uh, Dr. Williams. and it actually generated a lot of thought on my part, as you might imagine, about all the time that Dr. Williams and I uh, spent together uh, at Washington University and beyond. I first met Dr. Williams in 1970, when he came to Washington University to be the first chair of the African American, uh, well, the, at that point, the Black Studies Program. And um, as was described, he came in, uh, you know, like a, a big champion on a, on a white horse. And it's like, oh, wow, you know, and everybody looked to him for the kind of leadership uh, that was missing. And for me, I actually had received my bachelor's and master's degrees from Washington University. And when I met uh, Dr. Williams, I was, uh, beginning the process of working on my research for my PhD. And interestingly, and you wouldn't be surprised by this, uh, in all of my years of education at Washington U, Dr. Williams was the first African American professor that I ever had. And I relished that. I had a great relationship with him. Um, and we shared a lot uh, at the university and subsequently at various meetings of the Association of Black Psychologists. And uh, Barbara and I always looked forward to spending time with him. And our three children essentially grew up in ABCI, uh, knowing Dr. Williams and his kids and uh, other kids of members of the association. Uh, there's just so much that comes to mind for me uh, that I'd want to say, but I'll try to make it short. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Williams shared with me that when he was writing his uh, dissertation at Washington U for his PhD, he told the chair, then chair of the psychology department, that he wanted to write something on, he wanted to research something on black, the Black psyche. And he was told by the chair that there is no such thing as a black psyche. And if you want a PhD from this department, you're gonna to have to do some research on quote, real issues. And uh, Bob uh, understood exactly what he meant. And so uh, Bob decided that he would do what was necessary to get the degree in terms of the kind of research that he did, but that, that did not dissuade him from pursuing his interest in the black psychology once he got that degree. And again, that was back in 1961 that he got the degree. And so he was telling me about this after I met him in uh, 1970. Um, the expressions about the impact of Bob and Ava on the students who are enrolled at Washington U cannot be overstated. Their home was an open home that any of us felt like uh, we were welcome to be there. 
and uh, they invited us to dinner. They invited us to have dialogues, and uh, they were just a great family that made a difference to the Black community at Washington University while he was at the same time having a major impact on national issues. Um, while I was working with Bob, uh, it, 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 first on my PhD, I would mention that, and you've heard about the BITS test. I actually uh, used the BITS test as one of the measures for uh, one of the concepts that I had in my dissertation, which was um, knowledge of the Black experience. And that's a whole nother uh, conversation we could have. You heard about the, the uh, establishment of the expression uh, Ebonics. And uh, I was pleased to be at the conference that uh, Bob sponsored at Washington University, where that construct was actually stamped. And there were some outstanding people there talking about that. I also had the opportunity, uh, once I finished my PhD, I was invited to join the faculty at Washington U in the Graduate School of Education uh, in the area of uh, counseling psychology. And I actually had a joint appointment in counseling psychology and uh, African-American studies. And so Bob and I worked closely in that. And I watched his leadership to understand how one would go about becoming uh, an outstanding leader of an academic unit. And so uh, actually a few years into my role on the faculty, Bob decided he was going to take a one semester sabbatical and uh, I was fortunate that he asked me to serve as the acting director of the Minority Mental Health Program um, uh, while he was uh, on leave for that one semester. And it was my pleasure to do that. And he knew that it would give me invaluable training for what I would want to do subsequently. Bob and I, along with some other psychologists from the St. Louis area, and some others from out of town, like Willie Williams and others, did um, a, a lot of consultation with desegregating school districts, including the St. Louis Public Schools. And um, we spent a lot of time talking about educational and psychological assessment. And Bob demonstrated uh, that you know, if you design a test specifically for a particular group based on their experiences, they will do better on that test than anybody else will. And that began to have people understand that uh, they needed to look more broadly in assessing uh, intelligence and ability and achievement and, and those kinds of things. And I was also fortunate that Bob, uh, invited me to be um, a, I'll say, a, a junior author on some of the uh, publications on Black psychology uh, that he uh, put together. And uh, Bob was a person who introduced me to the Association of Black Psychologists. And I was saying to him a few years ago that you know, uh, being a student, having been uh, introduced to ABCI by him, that it was amazing to me that at the point I was talking to him then, then which would have been um, in the uh, late 80s or so, I said, and now all of a sudden I'm an elder of the Association of Black Psychologists. Like, uh, where did all the time go? But when I think about Bob, uh, I'm always filled with joy because as someone said, in, in addition to being a serious academic, he was also a very fun person. And uh, Barbara and I enjoyed spending time with Bob and Ava and, and again, our family, their family. And uh, as I said, I could uh, really go on, but the last thing I'll do, and this is something that I mentioned in my initial comments in joining the Zoom uh, call, 
is that um, in 19, I'm sorry, in 2004, I became uh, president of California State University Bakersfield after having spent time as a vice chancellor at UC Irvine and UC Berkeley. And I was fortunate that a number of the people that had been instrumental in my overall professional development were there, including Bob. And uh, I was excited that he was there. And I was excited to be able to tell people in as a part of my inaugural address, how important he had been. And it gave me a genuine pleasure to then introduce him to the audience at the inauguration. And uh, Bob and I have stayed in touch over the years. Uh, we've spoken by phone if we not if we had not been able to uh, see each other in person. But uh, I will always remember him. Uh, he's a giant. He was a major influence on my development as a person, as a father, and as a psychologist. And uh, uh, as I said, I could go on and on, uh, but I'll stop. Uh, but thank you so much. I'm really glad to have this opportunity to express some things regarding uh, Bob Williams. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. We are just honored that you were able to join us and share such a rich, rich history. And uh, we all know that that's uh, a minuscule amount of what you could have shared. Yes. But what you shared was very important for us to hear, both in terms of your life and history and psychology, as well as Dr. Williams. And we thank you for all that you have done for us as African-American psychologists and for the field of psychology in America. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Well, we were privileged, as I mentioned earlier, it was an honor for us to be able to do this. At this time, um, we will hear from the family and uh, Ms. Yvette uh, Williams Johnson will join the screen and introduce the Williams family, as well as her sister Dorothy, Ms. Dorothy Poole, who will give final expressions from the family. Welcome, Yvonne, and thank you. Thank you all. Good afternoon uh, to President Crawford of the Arkansas Association of Black Psychological Professionals and to Dr. Uh, and all of the members and to Dr. Patricia Griffin, who has become our newly adopted Annie. So you have all of those numbers that you talked about uh, being a part of your nieces and nephews and great nieces and on and on. Thank I'm you. Yvonne Williams Johnson. You're welcome. I'm Yvonne Williams Johnson. I'm number three. You all know by now that mother and daddy knew our names, but they finally uh, identified us by numbers. This is a special day for us today. Not only you're honoring daddy, Dr. Robbie L. Williams, but it's his birthday, his heavenly birthday. So it's an exciting day, it's an emotional day. We're grateful and we're thankful. So we thank God today for his life and the memories that you've been sharing based on his impact in your life and the lives of others. Last October, 2020, Dad informed us that he wanted to have a birthday party. He said, cause I'm turning 90. So I want to have a party at the house. So Larry and I started working on the party. Well, he went into the hospital January 1st, 2020. Uh, and one of the things that uh, happened he sat there and told me that he wanted me to write down all the names of the people that he wanted to come to his party. So it went from just a family to a list of a hundred. And most of the names and numbers he gave me without looking at his telephone. And I was amazed as he sat there with oxygen and hooked up and he just continued to work. As he lay in the hospital uh, without using his phone, 
Uh, and I say that because mother and daddy always wanted to bring people together. Daddy never presented without identifying as many have said, mother talking about us, his history, his parents. So you're honoring him on his birthday as in the fashion in which he lived. The day we have my brother Julius, who's the oldest, and his wife, Maritza, and I believe his son is there. Jacqueline Janelle may not be present. And he has, he's the one that uh, procreated, family procreated, what we had ended up with the great, great. So we have the two great grandsons with him. Larry and his wife, Linda, and I believe uh, his son and daughter, Shayla, Sean Ray, and Larry on there with their family and the four grandchildren. Reba and her husband, she has six children and three grandchildren. Dottie and her husband, Guy, Dr. Robert Anthony, and we call him Anthony, Anthony and his wife, Carol, Michael, our youngest brother. Uh, I'm not certain if he's there. Mother always told us to take care of my baby, and we are doing just what she said. And I believe my husband, Reverend Robert Johnson, and my son, David, his wife, Sarah, and, grand, and my granddaughter on the line. Other grandchildren are on Facebook, I believe. So I'm going to yield to my younger sister, Dottie, Dorothy Williams Poole, and she will share with you all. Thank you. We love you and appreciate you. Excuse me, and thank you for those introductions. Before uh, Ms. Poole comes on, we would like for the family members to open their camera so that we can see them um, on the screen. If you could um, just open your cameras. Oh, so wonderful. So wonderful. Yay. Yes. Thank you for being with us oh, on this wonderful. special day. We love mm -hmm. you and thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? It's like the screen is frozen. We, yes, can, we hear can hear you. you. We can hear you. Okay, my screen froze right when I was supposed to talk. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Griffin. Um, thank you, Carrie Crawford. And it was so great to see you, Dr. Mitchell. Well, I haven't seen you in so many years. Please um, give my regards to uh, Mrs. Mitchell as well. Uh, we'd like to also thank the Association of Black Psychology Professionals. We appreciate all that you're doing today to honor our father. Um, and we appreciate you honoring his life and his legacy. We affectionately call daddy, daddy. And if you've been around us long enough, uh, we're all from, we all grew up kind of in, in Missouri. So if, if now you hear Nellie, how they talk, you will understand why we call them daddy versus daddy. But he was our daddy. Um, and when Yvonne notified me of this event, um, she gave everyone the information. She said everyone should attend and we all agreed we would attend. And we were immensely touched and overwhelmed emotionally with an unexplainable joy. So thank you again, Dr. Griffin. Then one day Yvonne called me and said, the Lord said, and I said to myself, oh Lord, what have you gone and said to this girl, Lord? The Lord said I should yield the presentation of the thank you and acknowledgments to you. And I'm thinking, me, that's not my gift. Well, when the matriarch says, do something, you do it. And many of you don't know that Yvonne is now our matriarch. Since we lost our dear sweet mother a few years ago and our eldest sister, Robbie, prior to my mom. My sister, Reva Williams Pratt, number five, Name me Puddles, because I cry at the drop of a hat. So that would be the first of many cries as I contemplated what to write and to say about my daddy. Yvonne said, just tell a story. Again, that's not my gift. <laughs> daddy was the best story and joke teller. Thank you, daddy. He would tell us over and over the same stories of our childhood or parables and we laughed and relived those stories and parables over and over again as if it were the first time hearing them. Thank you, daddy. 
He was Dr. Robert L. Williams or Professor Williams to some, Dr. Bob or Bob to others, Big Bad Bob, and Robert Lee to a few, but just daddy to us. Thank you, daddy. According to my brother, Julius, who's number two, who has the memory of an elephant, said we lived in at least 12 homes over the course of our lifetime with one child, then eventually eight. Thank you, Julius. Daddy was so proud and so excited to count his 42 grands and great grands. Some of them are present today, as Yvonne said. Thank you, Daddy. They say behind every great man is a great woman. Not our Ava Lee. Although she stood five foot oh, she was seen as tall as daddy and sometimes taller and definitely heard. She stood next to him for almost 70 years. And as daddy said, she never complained. Thank you, mother and daddy. Daddy encouraged us to write our own story, walk our own path or find ourselves in whatever career path we chose. My brothers, Larry, number five, Robert, number seven, his namesake, and Michael, number eight, last but not least, all inspired daddy to continue to do what he did best, throw the ladder back so others could follow, be a light in the darkness, be a strong tower for the disenfranchised, and be a voice for the voiceless. Thank you, Daddy. He opened the doors for so many African-American students to be able to obtain their master's degrees at Washington University in St. Louis and others to learn and work under him so they too could write their own stories and walk their own paths. We heard story after story after story at his 90th birthday party last year and there were countless more that were untold. Thank you, Doc. Wow, I just, I can't believe I'm talking in past tense. But this is his story, his story, which is now your story and my story. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. You know, we can't choose our parents and I thank God for the ones I was blessed to be birthed to. Thank you, daddy. As daddy would say, I made it. I made it from the caddy shack to the Cadillac. Well, now daddy, you have made it to your mansion in the sky. Thank you, my daddy. Happy birthday. Love your one and only baby daughter, number six. Again, from the hearts of the family of Dr. Robert L. Williams, we thank you for supporting, loving and honoring our daddy on this day and over the decades. God bless you all. Thank you, Ms. Poole. Thank you, Dottie. Yeah. Such touching, loving remarks. And on behalf of the Arkansas Association of Black Psychology Professionals, we thank you for joining us for this celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Robert L. Williams. Dr. Robert Williams has left a strong legacy in his students and with his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. We will always love and treasure the time that Dr. Williams shared with us in Arkansas, his home state. And we look forward to journeying with you as we continue to keep his legacy alive. Again, this um, event is recorded and we will have it accessible on our Facebook page, AABPP, so that you can relive these treasured moments. Can anything good come from Bisco, Arkansas? Yes, absolutely. The Dr. Robert L. Williams. And at this time, um, Dr. Holmes will have a few announcements and will close us out. Thank you again for sharing this historical time with us on Dr. Williams' birthday. Dr. Holmes. 
Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Griffin. This was just an amazing time, an amazing time of celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Robert L. Williams and just hearing such amazing remarks about his life and all the people that he impacted. I just want to share, it's been several comments on Facebook. I know those on Zoom might not be tuned in to Facebook, but it's been several comments on Facebook, numerous people just, uh, just sharing uh, their thanks for all of the amazing information that's been shared about Dr. Williams. Um, one person shared, thank you, Dr. Griffin. This has been an awesome presentation. I studied under Dr. Williams in 1978 via the Minority Mental Health Program at Wash U, graduating in 79. My life has been wonderful thanks to the opportunities I received as a result of that experience. While my contributions are in the legal field, not psychology, my gratitude overflows, and I'm so glad I didn't miss this today. So that's just one of many comments on Facebook, and also people have commented on Zoom just about this wonderful time. So I'm just going to transition into a few announcements. Um, as Dr. Griffin mentioned in her presentation, the Arkansas Association of Black Psychology Professionals has a couple of books available. We do have a limited number, but if you would like a copy of either one of his books, this one, hopefully you all can see it. I don't know if it's if it's in the reverse on your screen. Um, but we can Raisin, see it. We can see it. Okay, great. Raising Black Kids to Be Okay. So again, we have a limited number, but if you all want a copy, we have uh, this book available. And then also... This one is well, racism learned at an early age through racial scripting. So again, we have these available um, and you can contact us at arblackpsych, P-S-Y-C-H at, at gmail.com or you can contact Dr. Griffin at 501-223-8883. So I believe I put that in the chat um, in, the, in Zoom. Um, so you all see that email address and then also on Facebook, I've pinned it. So it's at the bottom of the screen. I've pinned it for those who are attending via Facebook, our contact information, if you would like um, a copy of one of those books. Um, also, we do, the Arkansas Association of Black Psychology Professionals um, has started a scholarship fund. And I just want to pause for a second. I don't know if Erica Mays, if you wanted, if, were you going to share some about that or? I just want to make sure, I saw that you were on, I want to make sure I'm not missing an announcement that you had before I continue. Okay, she said she didn't have anything. Okay, I just wanted to, to make sure. Okay, so, but th through the Arkansas Association of Black Psychology Professionals, um, we have started a, Ro a Robert L. Williams Scholarship Fund. So if anybody wants to donate to that, we, you know, you are certainly welcome to do that. Um, checks can be made payable to AABPP, AABPP, um, and of course that stands for the Arkansas Association of Black Psychology Professionals, and our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 56812, Little Rock, Arkansas, and the zip code is 72215. Or we do have a cash app, and our cash app um, is, of course, the dollar sign AABPP. So again, that's for the Robert L. Williams Scholarship Fund. Um, and just briefly, uh, we also have, a, our organization has a Facebook town hall series that we've been doing for almost a year now, I believe, a little under a year. And um, somebody did have a question, do we have Givelify? We do not have Givelify yet. I know that is also an awesome way to give and donate. We don't have that yet, but we will keep that in mind. But right now we just have um, our cash app. And of course, if people have PayPal, you can do PayPal using our email address, arblackpsych at gmail.com. Um, so we do have a series called our Mindful Minute series. And so every first Monday on our Facebook page, you can join us live as we um, share information regarding emotional wellness to support the Black community. So just briefly in March, we're going to have um, a series or a panel 
called Stress Management for Educators, where we'll share information about self-care for um, our teachers and education educators and administrators. That's the first Monday in March, March 1st at 6.30. And in April, April 5th, that first Monday, we have the power of spirituality for coping during the pandemic. And then the first Monday in May, May 3rd, we'll have um, an Ask the Mental Health Professionals type of panel where we'll just receive a number of questions that are pertinent to emotional wellness, particularly for the Black community, um, addressing issues um, that people are struggling with during this time. So again, that's every first Monday, Facebook Live at 6.30. Um, in March, stress management for educators. In April, spirituality. And then in May, we'll be celebrating Mental Health Awareness Month um, with a range of issues that we'll address um, in our Facebook Live. Those are all of our announcements. Thank everybody for joining. We do appreciate your time and attention today. I don't know if Dr. Griffin, if you have any other closing remarks. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. And just briefly, um, my closing remarks are those of gratitude for honoring a remarkable person whose legacy is still with us. And it is incumbent upon us to continue the journey, to continue the journey, advocating the cause for social justice through mental health, through psychology, from a trailblazer, a remarkable role model, someone who has paved the way. Thank you for spending this time with us on uh, the birthday, the 91st birthday of Dr. Robert Williams, and may he forever be remembered. God bless you. <laughs>